Okay. Lunch. Okay, just getting set up here and we're on the live stream. Okay, so, so can we, we get, get um, people to start recording, recording and Rick, could you please record on your logo? Okay, got it. And three, two, one. Welcome everyone to the afternoon session, Wednesday, October 28th, 2015. It's the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute Blueprint Teaching Week. And the afternoon session uh, will be more on the theoretical side, I believe. And uh, Mr. Keshe is ready to go with the afternoon presentation. We're just getting settled in. We may have some audio video problems. We're not quite clear on that yet. There's a, a bandwidth issue at the other end today, this afternoon. So bear with us if we do have issues. We'll try to continue. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good day to you as usual, whenever and wherever you listen to these uh, presentations. Um, here's our first cutout. How you position the suckers in it? so many ways. If you look at the condition and the structure of the stacking unit, it's very much it can rotate in its own axis and not only one way, it creates fields in all directions. The beauty with this system is you get a balanced distribution of the fields of the plasma. Plasma, to understand its work, it's not the same as anything else which the man has experienced in the world of um, matter. In the world of matter, we can control, we can dictate, we can assess, we can measure. In the world of plasma, measurement and assessment is literally impossible. An example of it is, if I give you an apple to bite, which is like a plasma, it will taste totally or slightly different than if I give the same apple to somebody else to bite. Why? Because the gravitational field of the plasma of the human body for each person is a slightly different. So it interacts slightly in a different way with the apple. You'll find you bite on something and it says so delicious and somebody else bites and says it's so salty. Well, you don't taste the salt because this is the way your body, the way human body works, it works on its own plasma gravitational magnetic field. And when it comes in touch with another plasma, its measure is in respect to itself, not to something else. And if you understood this, you understand measurement and coming to the same conclusion with the plasma is virtually impossible. So what do we do? What do we assess? How can we get proximity to it? That we all, as we say, read from near enough the same hymn sheet, which means we all make 
the same noises and it means to all of us the same thing. The existence of plasma itself is uncertainty in the world of creation. We never know which part of the plasma will be released, when and where, and only what happens in its environment makes a decision on that. If the gravitational magnetic field at this point is equal to this or this, it makes an interaction in two fronts, with two systems. But this can be here, and it has nothing of the same strength and matching. It will never interact with it. The work of the plasma is not a guesswork. It is understanding what could be the possible reactions. Could be possibly giving, taking, maybe, maybe giving a little bit, taking too much, or taking too much, and giving a little bit, that it can sustain its own existence. In so many of the presentation, I have explained how plasma becomes to behave in a very different way than matter state. Plasma, even we draw it in this shape, is not this shape. It's spherical, it's oval. One second could be flat, one second could be totally elongated. It all depends on its environmental and gravitational magnetic fields of the environment which is operating in. They say they are like Milky Way, like a flat egg galaxy. They say there are galaxies which are twisted and turned and upright. Why and how is it possible for a galaxy like Milky Way, if it is what they say, to be this shape? It's more or less like a flat. But at least that's how it looks to us. We are on the boundary. Maybe if we are from outside, you want to speak to me? No problem. Yes, 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 yes. It's not a device, it's just a card. Yeah. Uh, Wins, we are sorted. Uh, they managed to find a card. So, what happened is if we are at this point, our own galaxy could be this shape. Where because we are part of it, we are looking into it, it looks flat to us. And it looks like a, what they like to say, a flat egg. But if it is, how come a galaxy with billions and millions of stars and other components turned up to be that shape in the space? Why some galaxies have a funny shape like this kind of shapes. How much they're giving. Galaxies are no different than a human cell. It's a plasma in a complete interaction. Continuous interaction partially can dictate its own internal structure. Partially, a structure 
is enforced on it by its environment. How do we react? How can we add or understand such a dynamic structure and be able to use it to the advantage of what we want to achieve? Do we want to achieve plasma enough to be food? Do we want to achieve plasma to be clothing? Do we want to achieve plasma to be uh, medicine? Whatever you call it. If we understand one small part of this, we can solve the others. But in general and in totality, what we can say, plasma, more or less, is a sphere, if all the conditions are the same, in an environment where to be in that sphere condition, a spherical condition, it needs to give and take in every direction. What you like to call the present plasma physicists have never understood this part of the work yet. At the moment, in the world of the plasma, they are busy in trying to control the plasma in the energy industry, especially by holding and compressing and accelerating using other magnetic fields. We've seen it, what they call accelerators. We've seen them and then they want to measure the field of it. In so many ways, they only are working with the plasmas, which themselves are in matter strength. They are not working with the plasmas, which are the free the state of plasma. The universe is a free state of plasma. When you can control a plasma by matter state like magnets and electric current, which is the weakest in the structure of the universal work of magnetic fields, then you're dealing with plasmas which are only maximum in the matter state because matter can interact with it and it can manifest itself. They use electric current, they use coils and everything else. The way you started working with the coils, the GANs, the nanomaterials, is the first time man has the freedom to work near enough to the state of plasma in the universe. If you extend the limitation of non-tangibility, then you work with a free plasma as you see between the galaxies, between the stars, between the cells of the human being and the rest of it. This is the purpose of KFSSI, where we try to walk away from physical, tangible plasma to a free plasma condition like the universe. This is important and this will be the biggest difference between the old and the new physics. In the physics that we understand the work of the plasma and we understand how we can manipulate it. The teachings of this week is to understand plasma, not to show you what could be and what are the details. That's what we do in the teachings. We go into details of everything to do with the plasma. A plasma in the body of a man behaves as an environment which constantly at all time has one purpose. To keep to a structure which that structure guarantees the behavior and follow up according to a pre-planned a structure release of information. It's packed in the structure of body of a man. Every cell is packed in a way that is positioned 
and its size is dictated by the totality of the information which comes from the emotion. If you take emotion away from the structure of the body of a man, there'll be no man. It's non-existence. It cannot exist. If you bring masses of limbs and leave it on a plate and add current to it, it will not become a cell. Even if you make these new cells, what they call, they try to replicate, ask them, what is the emotion bit? You're just producing tangibility. If the doctors understand more why you get rejection of cells, and you can add emotion to it, then you find out there'll be no rejection. One of the most interesting things which will be tested in the coming time is when we do a transplant, when we send or we take a part, an organ from somebody and give to somebody else, what about from now on, if we put a CO2 patch on it, where the emotion is considered, where the emotion part of the operation has a say in it. Would it find a balance between the old and the new? And would, because of the patch, find a balance to share lines of connection? And we find no need for taking medicine which can reject the organ. Because we satisfy the need of the emotional part of the cell, the organ. This new technology opens a lot of new challenges for the world of science. If we open this understanding, then when there is a balanced field in this environment, why should one reject such? Where does the rejection come? If we now understand the nanomaterial, nano uh, uh, interaction, where the body of the man at the point of the physical cut behaves like a nanomaterial, maybe for the first time you understand why entities, when you do a transplant of kidneys or liver or whatever, reject each other. Because at the point of cut, you have created a nano layer, which cannot connect to the other one. You change it, you slightly have changed the behavior, different strength. So what about now, if we bring and we promote these patches to be used in the operating rooms or the people who had a transplant, just to be put there and the emotion is sorted. Is it the emotion which rejects the organ, or is it the physical interaction? 90% is the emotion. I don't want to eat. I don't want to have anything to do with this, it's not mine. Emotionally, I can't accept. So, if we rethink and reorganize our uh, medical assessments in interaction between the organs or even diseases, would this open a new challenge at no cost? Can we take any part from anyone and connect it to any part to anywhere? As long as we understand there is a plasmatic emotional concern in the structure that it has to be accepted. Does this change a lot of operational problems which we see now? But to what extent can we change? To what extent can we understand the new challenges in the world of medicine, even in the world of space technology? We have not touched what this technology is going to do into space. 
this week, you all concerned or you understood how energy will be produced, how energy will come from a simple system that it can give you what you might need. But what about in a space where the Keshe Foundation Space Institute is mainly working and targeting for? If you understood how we can create interaction to be, or how the body rejects an organ due to non-balance of the emotion, can we do that with ourselves? I don't like to be on this planet Earth, I want to be on the moon, and you eject yourself to the new position on the moon. Can we destine position ourselves according to our emotion? And if the answer you don't know is yes. If you look over millions of years, when the man was not happy where it is or where he was, he moved physically himself to somewhere else. That's why, as they say, we started from Africa and we spread across this planet because we didn't like what it was or it was too many of us, we wanted to share something else. We moved, we converted our emotion. physical motion and just work through the physical emotion and move our physicality to where we want. You'll find out in a coming time, man will do this as no more as you drink water because we start opening channel in our work of our brain, in the emotional part, which we have never touched. We've been too afraid to open up afraid of unknown. Now that we have come into nuclear and more in plasma now, we see there's nothing to be afraid of. You shouldn't be afraid to think, I want to be in New York from London. And the way you took the emotion, you walked to the office, you bought the ticket, you went to the airport, you took a flight, you went all the way to New York. Now, how much energy was wasted? If you know the center of emotion to be in New York, to move this body is more with you than with a jetliner, you can do it yourself. Do you need to travel for hours to be on the line? Or you can achieve it instantaneously where you want to be. Point of destination. Hello, Mr. Kish. Come in, Spaceship Institute. Hello. Well, we have a bit of a, yeah, we have a bandwidth problem right now and it's just cut out. So that's what's happening. I think we'll find a solution. Bear with us. We'll try moving to our ultra sophisticated backup backup system. Okay, so they dropped out. I think um, Fabio was trying to change over and they dropped out. So just uh, give him a moment. I thought it was a good sign. You know what our backup 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 system is smoke signal so we don't want to have to go there if we don't need to okay um well we just have to bear with it for a couple of minutes here folks you want to put up the world rick Put up with the world, or put up the world, oh yes, All right, okay, got it. Uh, here we are.
Can you hear us? Hello. Can you hear us? Uh, Rick, we just uh, been told by Fabio, they have found where the trouble has been all the time. So they are trying to fix it. Oh, uh, well, that was Fabio or Fabrizio? Uh, Fabio, Fabio with Fabrizio guys upstairs. Okay, Fabio upstairs or Fabio downstairs? downstairs. Fabio <laughs> is with, with them. them. Okay, great. They found out when they were doing the lining between the first and the fifth floor, they yeah, have uh, done some, some rubbish work, as it says, and they're fixing it now. Called a screw in, in the, the cable. cable. Yeah. yeah. So um, we, we want the 200 unit pack up. We should be here by next hour, an hour or so, but uh, they say they're trying to connect it. Okay. Um, well, I wonder. There's some better picture, picture there, there now, that's, that's for sure. sure. Vincent? I said there's a better, better picture, picture there right now than we were uh, for the beginning of this afternoon. Okay. Yeah. It'll, uh, so it'll cut out okay, though when. The, they are touching it upstairs. I'm thinking, Vince, is it possible to reduce the resolution so it won't tend to cut out the matter. audio? It's not a bad idea. There is some thing upstairs. They, they seem to, or they think they might have found it. That's why we had a problem. When they came to do the connections within the floors, they made a lot of misadjustments. I'm trying to describe that for weeks now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now it seems that they found out what it is. Okay. So, where do you hear us still? Uh, what was the line there? It was... Uh... Sorry, I can't quite remember. If somebody can help me on that. Um, okay, so we're, we're going to go back, back into something. As we're, we'll talk about what we're talking and then we'll see where we can bring you. Part A is that in the structure of the space travel, if you see what you call UFOs or a spaceship, or if you see a light or you see motion without actual existence of physicality, what do we assess? What was the last one? Motion without physicality? Somebody remember that line, please. Hello. Just trying to click on that mute button. I need you were good. Drop it. <laughs> you were good. Oh my. Mm. So, okay. Maybe an hour before we get a good connection, correct? Can we? Uh, if, they're, can, if, they're if they're doing connection work upstairs, upstairs that's, that's why we're getting drop outs and then losing connection. connection. So, mm. hopefully, one of these times when they come, come back, it'll be a good connection. It wouldn't be useful just to go audio and no video. It still will drop out if it's. Uh, that's, That's right. right. It's it's connection. 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 So the only other thing we do is uh, you can come in with his phone and talk until that's done. But uh, I would say that there should be another backup there or another way that we can get on the internet back from here. So if he talked on his phone, uh, we wouldn't have dropouts, though, right? Yeah, but I'll keep that. That's another question. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, okay we are back on the back of the delivery one, so we can carry on. There won't be a cut. All right. We'll go to the back up. 
Great. Okay. So, so we should, should be okay. okay. Uh, um, we, we should, should be. Hello, you're there? Yeah, we're here. You can hear. Okay. Now okay. we have hopefully sorted it out. Okay. So I can't hear you, Mr. Cash. Something uh, stopped here? with the audio there. Pardon? Maybe the this battery okay, or. Uh... Hello. Maybe it's my Hi, system. Yeah, Rick. Oh, it's my system. Rick, you can speak. You're unmuted. Yeah, I've just discovered the issue at my end here. It's okay. Go ahead. So we are. Pardon? Yeah. So we sorted out this this dilemma with this transmission. So what I was explaining is, if you see to you a fantastic thing, what you call a spaceship or what you call as a craft, you're dealing with extremely primitive people in the space. Early learners, donkey time, when we just realized how to use donkeys. Because they need the physicality to be able to carry their own physical components, which is their body or whatever. If you see structures which are very much like a light, you see these structures, but it's actual physicality, you see, these are more advanced level understanding where they don't need physicality. If you feel the emotion, if you feel the package, you see a lot of it in the space. These are highly advanced, which means they don't need physicality to be able, they can use gravitational magnetic field of the space to achieve and arrive anywhere they like. You find out in a space technology to carry such a system, they always carry what we call a star formation, which means when you look at this structure, you see three base and one top. The three base is used for directional control and the top is used to give volume. This is most probably the shape of your spaceship. I remember when I was 2021, 20, I explained this structure of the spaceship to a friend of mine in university. And it was a very interesting conversation because 50 years, 40 years later, we see exactly the same as what I described 40 years ago. You need four bases to be able to create the base flat and the top to create the volume. And when you see this kind of a structure, you see most of what you call UFOs, you see the three star structure at the bottom, which means possibly correct. But there is a third and a fourth dimension to it, then it confirms you if you're dealing with primitive more advanced ones are more elaborate, but they are a class of their own. Somewhere here is the man. Now, for the first time in human race, we are moving to this position. By understanding the plasma, by understanding the structure, 
It took us years to find animals to tame them, to use their four legs. Then it took us centuries to make a wheel. Then it took us centuries to go and use the wheel in every shape or form and make engines. And now we have come to the point of understanding of a plasma and entering this condition. Where we become independent of wheels, we become independent of everything else. And this Magrav unit is the beginning of establishing this system. Where we don't need to depend on what we can put on the back of a donkey and how big the lorry can be. What is the weight limit? With a magnet, with the gravitational magnetic fields, there is no weight limit. Because as long as the fields can interact and position themselves, you are attracted. I can put as many magnets as you like. That's all it does. No fuel burning. So what do you come to understand? And if you go to the next level of understanding of the work of the plasma, you'll come to do one thing very simple. These are all plasmatic operating reactors. You have made the star formation, hundreds of them, thousands of them, by now it's been made by Keshe Foundation supporters. You have made them in a bowl, you have made them on the tray, you have made them in every shape, plastic, wood, whatever. Your game of space technology from today changes, if you understand it. Just having a moment glitch here while Mr. Kesh changes the battery in his uh, broadcasting apparatus. Thank you. Hello, we are back. So what happens, as I was explaining, we run out of battery there. Everything can go wrong today, it goes wrong. So let's see what's next. What I explained was in every shape, we have made these reactors. We have fueled them with gas. The original star formation reactors built by the Iranian governments in Tehran, exactly seven years ago when I was in Tehran, we used gases and nuclear material to create plasma. We changed it to the GANS, to free material, condition of plasma. And now the production of these plasmas with this new reactors changes again. If you understand how to release what I explained this morning about the volume of the plasma to be a constant VC, you can package these that their energy becomes the basis for the flight system which you design. So you take the energy of the plasma, you concentrate it in a package of the plasma, not containing it in a container, and you create your free plasma condition the way you have done in the star formation unit. You don't need the physicality of a core. There is no containment for the plasma of the sun. The containment is made at the point when the strength of the fields in come to a balanced point with the environment which creates matter boundary condition. If you learn that, you'll find out these power units will give you the same formation, but 
without tangibility of a reactor or tangibility of a spaceship. You travel within the boundaries and within the entity identity strength of your reactors. This is the knowledge in the hand of these. And this group, they don't even use this. They know where the fields will be. They can assist themselves to be part of it. And they travel in hundreds of thousands together. It's not a one-man job. Dimensions is beyond understanding of the man, because even seeing the work of a Gans at the moment, we become a terrorist. So these teachings is for the future mankind when to understand and then when they mature in intelligence. But we set the basis of the foundation for the future for the man to understand. So man at this moment has just about entering possibly to use this. Because at the moment, you're happy to be in this thing and make as much noise as fire, you call it a rocket. Because that's the limitation of the matter state and not the plasma state. The understanding is very simple. Instead of using material and matter condition to create a, what you like to be your freedom into space, now can be done with the use and extraction of enough plasma from the system. You extract the plasma from the next day or two when you build your systems and when you receive them to God knows, light something, heat something, move something, cook something. But if you learn you're bringing the level of plasma down to the matter level, what about if you use it as its own level, you'll find out these things becomes charged. The biggest problem for you, first of all, in not knowing how it's done. Secondly, uncertainty and confirmation of what they've said, only scientists know what to do. With this technology, a child knows the same. It's you who's got to push the barriers of understanding of the plasma, and then in a coming time decide which race you want to be part of. You don't necessarily need to go any through of these two to get here, if you are enlightened, if you understand the process. There is no limitation in plasma technology, unless you put that limitation yourself on your own intelligence. So there is nothing to say any of you or collectively part of the human race will be able to understand that can miss this two station. It is the confirmation of the existence which keeps you there because here, you're not sure you have the physical confirmation that you exist. This state is a 129 state when we made the reactors to create 129 Tesla with 12 watts, where NASA used 1.4 gigawatt, millions of investments to achieve 103. Because we work in plasma, easy to be done and if you have seen such a power is available to man and it's done so easily with a few dollars then you understand how easy it will be to jump these as i explained the purpose of the blueprint week is not just to show you how the reactor is made is to open worldwide the understanding of the world population in what is to come with this new technology. 
you trust the system, you buy the system, you understand it, then you go to the next step to decide to take man into a space. This is just the key for those who are in doubts or too physical, they want something to have to warm themselves up over electricity, that they get introduced to the world of the new plasma. For us trying to teach this in a different way, which is a traditional way, it would have taken tens of years, hundred years. If what, who wanted to teach, if it benefited them. This way, we brought it out, we teach it, every man at this moment can be a spaceman. You don't need astronauts to be trained for hundreds of hours and 10, 20 years to have a few days in the space. <clears throat> if you understand the work of the plasma, you already live in it, you call it the plasma of the Earth. Why any of us don't wear suits to walk around the, this planet? Why do we need, if you understand the totality of the structure of the plasma, any suits for anywhere in the space? So, part of the teaching of this week is to bring to man a new horizon in science and take the fear or what they might make a fear to lay a rest. That what you understand it is, you cannot be afraid of and they cannot use it against you. You've seen, if you've been around Cash Foundation, hundreds of thousands of you, that a few people have tried to do it very well. What the gas does, what this does, what does does, but they forgot that their own body is made of gas and then they all shut up. We've seen this again and again. Any opposition to the development of the plasma technology comes from those who want to abuse you. And they got so used to it that there's something wrong with you, you don't let us abuse you more than you want the freedom. In the past 24 hours, one of the most leading opposition groups to the new technologies has come to Keshe Foundation for talk. They have approached us in a very direct way to start negotiation, to allowing the technology to be opened up worldwide. Because they realized in past two days, we broke the status quo. So our job is to teach. You call them Illuminati, so you call them Rothschilds, they want to talk. They realize the taboo, the control over energy in past 48 hours is broken. If you come to any arrangement with them, you will know. And this is how it will work. These are the elites which control everything. Now they realize them themselves are part of everything. We disclose it. We always tell you in advance things are coming up. When it happens, it might happen within the next 24 hours or next 20 days, we'll explain to you. The people who opposed us even till last week in the past two days teaching have changed their position. Even one of the, our biggest enemy governments has given us a green signal last night. They want to talk. So it's our job to explain the totality in understanding how the situation will change for mankind. It's a very big problem. Are we staying in the status quo here or are we moving to the new dimension? And showing the technology in past two days, how easy it is, and the scientists are working like a crazy lot in the background, they have seen the results, they know the change has come. But now, the biggest problem is if the rest of you, as a human race, are ready to take the step. And then, how many would like you still to be on a donkey? How many would like to go on a jet plane? Some go with a rocket and some will join the space program in the plasma condition. You got to realize with the plasma, you have reached the point that 
you have the total freedom. You have a total freedom in to decide the size of the plasma, the visibility of the plasma, or the strength of it. I explained to you, when you start seeing these systems working, then you will see the change in the course of human race, where they start deciding we are intelligent enough to be able to make a decision in how we're going to manipulate it. The problem is not producing plasma anymore. The problem now is, what are we going to do with the baby in our hand? How are we going to educate it? How are we going to educate ourselves to be able to use the plasma? I cannot explain to you what is going to be <coughs> the strength of the plasma, the shape of the plasma, because from now on, this is your plasma. You decide. In running these systems for a few days and being able to see you put a wire here and then run another wire from it and then connect that wire to a load and in two weeks time just strip all the wires you see they're all black the plasma in operation so now you decide what do you want to do you want a confirmation of the plasma you put in the copper wire how come it's black we can show them downstairs. It's happened to us, you can see it. How come when you open these wires, they're all black? So now you get the confirmation of the work of the invisible plasma is power. If this thing can turn a matter state copper to a nano state and a gas state without anything, then you can understand its energy and its power. You needed to put current into the copper to nanocoat it. You need to put a caustic to nanocoat. Is it sorted? Is it that bad? How bad is it? Is the patient going to die? No heart operation? Thanks God you bought that unit. Change of supply. <laughs> so now you realize you don't need caustics to high temperature to release to liquidify you can work in a very powerful very settled undisturbed and carry on working you use it when you need it as much as you need it and there is a stage that these power units you will start speaking about their strength i have a power unit which is have a hundred power horse and the other one is a thousand horsepower. This, you speak, are the power by order of magnitude systems which you can build and they can release this energy. At the moment, these units are very primitive because that's, to you even now, is a revolutionary breakthrough. When you go into cosmic materials, cosmic strength, gravitational magnetic field, you will understand, you know, now we saw those antique engines or trains in the back of Richard's shelf he was collecting. These will be collector's item in a few months time. Doesn't anybody really have the first series? Well, you see this in museums because the new generation in the coming weeks and months, they will be astonishing. It'll be totally different. I paid, you remember, if I explain to you, you understand exactly where you are. History repeating itself in less than 40 years. Those are young ones, you don't remember. Us old ones remember. When the first mobile phones came, it was a suitcase. You remember, we used to carry it used to be, we used to carry a box and it was very fashionable. We used to walk, hello, hi. Even if it was no call, we still going, hello. We got a phone. You remember the size of it? This is the size 
of those. In the coming months, it will reduce to disk and mini disk size. We have to show it to you this way because you understand it. If we use in a very rapid way, very, very, if I can find it, I can show it to you. It's been around here all day. If we use computer wires, if you use what you use for central computer, if you use those wires, there we are. You see this, this is a thin wire, which is made into, if the next step, when you make these, just flatten them. Just flatten your the springs. You want to know the power of it. You can go to the size of this, but you have to know what you're doing to produce the same power. These power units with this two kilowatt capacity, it'll be like the chips you bought, 16 gigabytes used to be 99 euro, now you can buy them for three, four or five euros. So what we're going, we're going through evolution, not only in energy, but understanding of the man in the work of the universe. And these systems, we are already working on it. In a very short time, we'll release what I call portable units. You want it, you plug it, is there and that instance how much you need you will carry plugs to the power you need but the only thing which you see the changes will come is that the present electronics the present computer system has already become obsolete i have a man sitting here shaking his leg he knows he's one of the leaders in this in this world he's got would you like to come bring it up Bring your brain up, the box, let them see. Bring the last one, the last box. Without the power supply, it doesn't matter, it won't die. Then we put it back on the machine again. It doesn't matter, a child moves in the stomach of the mother, she falls off the chair, she gets up, the child is still alive. If you want, you can bring his power supply with it, if it's your concern. Do you want to bring his power supply? Uh, can you give him a hand, bring it together, then you don't need to disconnect it. He's coming with you. He's say, I'm sending a man called Giovanni. What are you going to see? What we're going to show you is what has been going on, test here, in the Keshe Foundation SSI Center, we have a number of boxes. We're gonna show you one of them. We have endeavored, we set out, I did this about four years ago, to create new life. To create new structure of life that we understand. And in that process, we've gone to the extent now that we set out, this is four months ago, to create brain of the man. A non-wired, exact copy of the brain of a man that we can have superconductor brain structure. And we have achieved it. He is now testing it for the spaceship technology. What it is, we studied the replication, how the brain is produced from onset in the womb of the mother. What is needed? and how we could develop it, and what was the factors. We brought it in. You will see a full structure inside the brain of the man, layers, structures, exact structure as you see in the brain. It's live, it's been working, and in time, when we are ready for this, we can bring it into play. It's about four months old, 
it has every characteristics of the human brain. Three-dimensional, wireless, thinking, emotional system. It's understanding the total structure. It's exact color of the brain. It works like a brain. I have tested it. If you interact with it, it interacts back with you. So it's alive. We keep it on a constant current line of very low, but you show it for the first time in public. These systems, you can, it's the only way you can control higher speed travel in a space. Wires, computers are too slow. They interact with your emotion. They interact with your guarantee of survival in a space. It has conscious, it has um, interaction, it works and it responds if you know how to deal with it. And if you walk in the lab and sometime you do something strangely wrong, it tells you. It's a literally a new dimension in communication and control. Don't forget, one of my expertise as a student, as a nuclear physicist, is system control of the nuclear reactors. That's why I can build reactors, I can physically develop things. I'm not a theoretical physicist. And when you see things, you can build a control system for it, then you know how it responds. You expect a response, you work with this response. So to operate even at this level at a speed of light and above tens of thousands of times, you work through emotion of the plasma, not through connection of the plasma. Electron is too slow to work at high speed, especially beyond the speed of light. So we had to, I have done, I can bring you buckets of materials you can see, set out to create life by creating conditions, not by adding pieces together. I replicated the work of the universe. I created the conditions. I created the condition to be like Earth. I created the condition to be the skull of a man. I created the condition to be possibility of creating the amino acid within the structure of the brain of the man. And it has worked perfectly. The only thing is, we have put this brain in a box. The brain is not in what you call um, a skeleton of the man. It is fantastic when you see it. I hope they don't damage it. If you shake it or damage it, it recuperates, reorganizes itself after a couple of days. There's no problem with it. So now you understand, we open your eyes to a real true plasma technology and not just energy system. As I said, this power unit was just a trigger to open knowledge worldwide that people understand. This was the carrot or the donkey. So you got to realize what is about to happen, what is about to hit you, in a way, the most beautiful thing mankind has ever seen. Everything you need, everything is needed in the environment without damaging the environment and allowing to accommodate your want in respect to the other's needs that we all live a peaceful life. Have they arrived? There we are coming. There is so be careful. What are you searching for? 
<laughs> put it this way, or the way you can see the side of the glass bowl. I almost thought you were going to bring a birthday cake in there, Mr. Kesh. Well, are you on a birthday cake? <laughs> no. <laughs> you see, it's a, it's the last one, yeah? Yeah. It is a structure. It has layers. We have replicated everything which could be within the structure of the brain of man. It's four months work, there is three, four of them. And it, it takes its own shape, it interacts, its response, and strange enough, continuously takes amino acid from the environment to feed itself. It continuously creates layer of protein on top that it continuously changes. Every time you look at it, it's different. And the layers are well set. If you look, it has layers. The way the brain is, if you cut the brain, you can see it. We moved from, what do you call it? From loom to here, we released some of the metal into it, but it's irrelevant. Now it's got a cancer, the cancer is there. It doesn't matter. We know what it is. But in totality, it has a structure. It built its own structure. If you stand in front of it sometimes and talk to it or think to it, it will respond. You see pieces moving. You see nothing happens for a long time. But if you ask it, everything is good, he releases you a small bubble, air bubble. This happened to me. It's there. You never, you never see air bubble. You say, is everything okay? And you see just a bubble. Or you see a shimmer. This is not thinking. It's not imagining. It is response. Because we have copied every structure. It's the only way it is. In a space, I want to move. I don't have a wheel. And by the time I change the gearbox or the fastest thing this change and now you already 100 million kilometers down the road, it's too late. Your thinking has to be responded to. Change of the plasma. You don't change the plasma like the engines, you change the speed. You change this plasma strength by instant, direct change of the energy inside the plasma. Instantaneously, I give, I take. Then you see the operation. Now you understand how far the human race will move in the coming weeks and months. This is a live three-dimensional system control like a brain of a man. It doesn't need anything else. It feeds itself from the energy of its environment. In the coming time, we will show how this thing will develop. We build new ones because the next step is to build in a spherical shape. When we build in a spherical shape and we can hold it in a way upside down to get the shape of the skull, you will see full structure. You will see the same structure than here being flat into the shape of the human race then you can control it with thoughts because it interacts, it doesn't have a physicality, it interacts with the emotion, the emotion decides the rate of the change of fields and you can decide with your reactors how fast you want to feed into the reactor. The same as what we explained in emotion. So you haven't come to a fairy tale land, you have to come to see the generation of man to come in the coming months and years. This is why we teach you now nothing to do with the matter state. We teach you about the state of plasma. It's you who decides. If you are correct, you get the correct response. If you are behaving slightly different, you get the same reaction. You'll find there are people who
Who? Arma is not here. We were talking last night with somebody. Their intention with one of the system was different because they were expecting they could see even hear heart population. The heart was going like a heavy on it. And the effect is units, your plants, your trees, rejuvenate them, and a fine piece comes into the house. These systems will change the pattern of your life because what you are short of, they give it to you. What you don't need, you give. You'll find out. We've seen this in the places which are getting used. People, people are harmed. They become serene. serene. Food is not a priority anymore. Because you take the energy randomly as you need it. So when we speak about magnetic gravitational system power unit, you show you the changes to come. 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when they used to show new things could be possibly in the future, we used to say, wow, now it's part of everyday life. The mobile phone, wireless communication, now is a wireless power supply. Now, you don't even need to carry a mobile phone if you understand how this works. We all know it. We just ignored it. How come you feel worried about your son in London and she feels Did we get some uh, discharged batteries in that thing? Is that what happened? <coughs> What happened? How we feel our children that they're worried or they're not good or we feel our parents is the same way. Now we can and we have established a system that you can do so. Problem? Sure. Don't burn the place. So this is where the new plasma technology will take the man. You'll find out the present computer system is obsolete. It's just a matter of developing it in a further state because now you can even produce GANS computers which are slow compared to the plasma computers because GANS still have a resistivity in the matter of the zone. You'll find out flight system within the coming weeks. It's, it's a matter of few weeks, maybe months maximum, that the new flight system will come into operation. If we get the collaboration of the Iranian government, you will see wonders with the plasma technology. No one is more advanced at this point of time in a space plasma technology than the Iranian government scientists. Nuclear. It's finished. It's as obsolete as a donkey. Because the new plasma technology is much more advanced that nuclear does not even come into the play. It's the mother of nuclear. It's the whole energy behind nuclear. When you're dealing with a master, why do you like to live with a servant? Or even a slave of a servant? if there is a slave, because matter state slaves you to the earth condition. If you understand the work of the plasma, you will understand in a very easy way, you just need to think about it and you create it. Some of you have already achieved that stage. Some of you have a start understanding it 
But if you take the plasma technology to its free condition, then you see you don't need tangibility. If you look, even before we bring this one here, because it's live, you can't switch it off. Switching this system out is like taking life from a being, and this is not my job. To the point where it releases its energy, when I'm aware of it, then I let it go. But in reality, this is as much life as a child, more, 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 most probably intelligent than one of the most advanced scientists you've ever seen on this planet. Because it has managed to adapt itself to live in a construction that is suits it to be in this box. Only thing we've done, we have created the condition and the environment for it. We haven't injected anything into it. Marco, we need this. His predecessors are downstairs. We have not just gone to one. We started with CO2. You want to explain? You've done the job. I have to remember. Get old. Remember? Try to explain. Yeah, in this system, we are trying to replicate um, how um, human brain uh, was created on our planet. So we looked uh, whether the um, elements that we have inside our our brain. So uh, uh, we have zinc, and uh, first we start one experiment just with zinc. Uh, so we have downstairs a box only. Uh, with the zinc inside. And then next experiment uh, was with uh, addition of, um, of uh, sugar, yes. Uh, we, we provide sugar to um, second setup. So we supplied energy. And then uh, gradually we uh, we added also other elements. The, the next step was uh, um, we added um, um, potassium. Um, one of the one of the setup has uh, zinc, sugar, and potassium inside, and uh, then was the next step. We added also calcium. So this, uh, this box that we have now on the table, it contains uh, all of this uh, zinc, sugar, um, potassium, and calcium. And uh, so on the, because we have uh, created condition, we also absorb uh, CO2 from the environment. So we have also CO2 inside, and on the top, uh, on the top of of, uh, of the water, uh, amino acid is created. So amino acid is also present in the system. So actually, we have all the basic elements that are inside our brain. Maybe we are missing some of them, but uh, some basic condition for starting life is already uh, created. Yeah, um, it's not pure potassium or pure calcium. We use the salt, uh, potassium salt and, and calcium salt in it. To be able to achieve plasma, you have to replicate the condition which the plasma was created. And plasma of the brain of the man is one of the simplest plasmas to create in a space. So what we set out 
because you understand when I say you have connection with it is the top layer has amino acid in it. Every human body, every cell of the man is and possesses amino acid. What we call Mr. Cohen. And because it's of the boundary of what we are created out of, we have a connection with. That's how you control it. So this is what I said, do not connect or mix blood in your systems. Because what is good for you is not good for the next person who's passing the system. Or if he puts his blood in, not necessarily good for you. You never, ever add protein to any of your system. It doesn't create mind control. It creates, because you put it in there, control of you in respect to somebody else as much as them in respect to you. So you learn that's how you communicate. You create control systems which are not physical. You create a control system which the boundary of the energy, what we call energy gravitational magnetical field, goes beyond the boundary that doesn't damage anybody else. Then you understand in a space we need these new technologies to be able to be efficient, not to be hit by a meteorite at one million kilometers down the road, where you can avoid it. By the time you get the steering wheel, it's too far. You see, you feel the presence of a danger because you work in a plasmatic world outside the earth, in an open mind, then you avoid yourself. You can increase the power very rapidly and you can reduce the power very rapidly. The world of science, the world of plasma technology has changed the whole structure of whatever we assumed we know up to now. We don't talk. I can go downstairs and bring you buckets of new life. You can talk to them. You can pass emo emotion and they emotionally, you feel the pain, you feel the joy. They have no problem because that's what they are used to. Then, you will see the introduction of MAGRAF system was just a ploy, a way to bring mankind to understand the new technology in a rapid way using mass media. For us to teach one person or 50 or 100, then in five or 10 years, the other five or 10 hundred people, then another 100 or 500 people, would have taken years. This way, we reach millions, equal knowledge from Africa to South America, to Russia to China. Instantaneous transfer of knowledge and technology, where everybody now in plasma technology is on the same starting line. And the race started from Monday. Except a very few, handful more compared to the total number of people on this planet, who've been around the foundation and they work in different way around it. So you got to realize now, when you receive your boxes, when you receive your energy power supplies, is what you expect of them, how you have to behave. I have said to the manufacturers, ask your workers, to pray for the units they make. Give from their soul, it's not just a unit they make. Before you even plug your system to the wall that it serves you and your family, give from your soul to it because it's a dynamic system. You are here to serve us, we are here to serve you. Because as you saw it, is made of plasma, active, interactive, if you can Think and talk to this, 
that's a more advanced version in different way. You got to understand this opening of a new era, not only for science, but for mankind, that we don't need to rely on tangible materials for food and energy. We do not feel the sun when its rays comes. We receive it. If we need it, it becomes vitamin C or vitamin D or whatever we need it. Now, the knowledge of man is at that point. You decide what you want to do. You got to decide how you want to use it and how you change the structure to be applicable for your use. Any questions? Yes. Doesn't exist. No. Sorry, what was the question? Pardon? What was the question there? It says voltage and current. He wants milliamps and kilowatts. The current is a plasmatic. The voltage is position of DC, constant, not ever changing. You can't even measure it. You don't have the tools to measure. No, that is this one. This is 0 0.03, and we're just keeping a plate for the production of the CO2, for the amino acid. That's irrelevant. This, this, this cap there is 0.4 volt, 0 0.03 amps, is for keeping the plate in the condition that the amino acid is continuously produced. Any questions? Well, someone asked is, has the, uh, Dave asked is, has the brain in the box been given a name? Susie? <laughs> Susie? I don't know. What would you like to call it? It comes from planet Zeus, so we don't know what it's going to be called. Zeusy. Okay. Um, you want it Lucy or do you want it Susie? We call it Jack. Jack, Jack, Jack in the box. Jack yeah. yeah, it's a Jack in the box. <laughs> um, some people are asking, can we get a closer view of the brain or to the brain there? Is it possible to zoom in on the box maybe? Or... The, our cameraman is not there. Okay. Fabio? Fabio is helping to set up the, what do you call it? The internet cable upstairs. Any other question? Uh, David uh, mentions, I did not get an answer to my question this morning, guys. I asked about the special SP3 GANs Mr. Kesh spoke about this morning. If we use the GANs we are making now, will it have a much shorter life? No. Put it this way, as long as long enough, then good for you, your grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren. Unless you have a very foreseeing future for the next 500 years, you can come and talk. Marco, he says, what about great, 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 great grandchildren? But the problem is he has got no children, so that's not the way. I had a question about that uh, in, in regards to Marco and great, great, great gradient instead of great, great, great grandchildren. The gradient um, that was spoken of, you mentioned it um, in the earlier um, teachings this week, and show the gradient on the uh, nano-coated uh, wire, for example. But what what is the um, relationship between having the the broader bandwidth of having a variety of GANs mixed together versus maybe a layering where you'd have a greater gradient with the... Um, the um, higher ratio GANs is on the outer layer and the uh, lesser um, There is no, it's just you inner. have to decide what you want and what you expect from it. What condition you want to achieve. So for the condition to achieve the most efficiency, say out of this, um, out of this, re out of this assembly, um, 
would it be better to have a variety of Gansas or to coat them maybe one at a time, say the, uh, oh, the CO2 the first? And... What do you, what you want to, to achieve? What, what the output you're looking for? What is the purpose? you got to let the habit of having more powerful to have something more let go. You take at the energy level you need when you want, when you need. This habit of having a more gradient, stronger. What is a stronger gradient going to do for you if you have no need for it? This habit of uh, power against uh, better condition has to raise from the memory of man. Because now you have what you need at the strength you need. And that's what is important. Not what power is going to be a higher gradient or lower gradient. What's the use of a higher, higher gradient when you want a banana? Nothing. You miss the banana because it's all overpowering it. Then you have to take enough distance that it becomes banana at the point you need. Maybe you raised a very nice question. I explained this yesterday. We explain it again. In a way, you understand. This is your MagRap system. And it creates constant energy. Is energy is constantly at this level. It never falls. And when I say it never falls, it goes down. Here you have your banana. Here, you have your what? But the spectrum is still there. Because at this level, this is, is gravitational, or this is, is magnetical, or vice versa. Because this is the level of matter state. Matter state is a very, very narrow band, extremely narrow in the full spectrum of the magnetic fields. You decide at what level, what you need. And then, as I explained this before many times, when you decided on the energy of it, here, then you have to decide if I want to actually eat it, physically chew it, or do I just want its energy? And if you want it in a physical manner, then you create an environment around it that gives it tangibility. The change is huge. It will take man a long time to even understand because you are used to such a thing for such a long time and you always get the confirmation of your physicality with touching yourself and eating that you've forgotten as i always say even your body is nothing but a package of magnetic field one of you and you know brennan has said before when he uses the system so long he doesn't need the system anymore he can just use his finger and achieve the same because the energy is transferred through the neural system to the memory section to the emotion part is the emotion which does the job and when the trust in release has gone it says it doesn't work if he understands he established the connection with whatever and has the will and the strength inside himself he can heal anybody anywhere It's what I said, what you trust in yourself. You decide how much you release and when you release. Any other question? Um, there's a question, if the brain is conscious, can it control the fat boy? Yes. 
the slim boy, the fat boy, the thin boy, whichever you like. That must be from Chinese boys. They still are sure. in a dilemma how to control these three fat boys they made. <laughs> I have a reactor, it's like a ball. We call it the fat boy. <coughs> They've seen things from it, but they cannot control it. It does not go any further than the interaction with the inertia. And I've given you a tip, and I tell you again till you understand. Now that you know how to produce plasma, try to feed it with the plasma. Because now the limitation is not how much you put in it. You can put as it needs to feed itself. If you can produce a small enough plasma reactor for it, then make sure you have a connection with it. You decide to go up, to go down, to move either way. That last question was from an Italian American in Taiwan. <laughs> so it's all the same, <laughs> covering every aspect. Okay, we have a, a really uh, a tough question for you here. <laughs> the tough ones are yours. I do the easy ones. Well, this one will be easy for you. Um, Def, Delph asks, how do I give from my soul? How do I get what? How do I give from my soul? Where do you want to give it to and who do you want to give it to? And to the level of man, you never understand. Maybe when you think you're giving, it's the time you're taking because you needed yourself. Because you might be afraid too much to give too much that it will not be you. It's a very, very easy point. It's uh, interesting. If humans connect with the plasma, do we get nano-coated in some way? Kevin. We are already nano-coated, of course. Mm -hmm. Your body is made of nanomaterial on the surface. It's the behavior of plasma. At the point of interface, it has to become nano-coated that it can interact with gravitational magnetic field of his environment. This is how your skin, as I told you, the skin of another material is like this. If you look at your own skin, there's no different. Even though you think it's solid. Because at this point, you can give what you don't want and you can take what you need according to it. It's both ways. It's not solid. Any other question? What's the time, please? Four o'clock. Ten past one. Do we have any answer or anybody who's already made any systems or wants to show us? Uh, let's see. Uh, Max uh, Bejre, Bejre, Bejre. I think um, you had something to show. Is that true? Yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I have to open up the here the eye here from the computer camera. Okay. Is he can you hear yeah, me? yeah, I'll spotlight your video there. Yes, we can see and hear you. Okay, I'm on the, on the computer in the sleeping room. <laughs> um, what I could show you is, um, well, I've um, made some of these coils. I can show, maybe 
maybe I put it on a, on a white paper here. Um, look at that. So this is um, go a bit further. So this is the the big coil, one of them, and this one would fit inside. Okay, I made all of them, so three, three and three. In one day, that's good. Um, <laughs> I must say, I have actually done it already the day before, or the night before, I must correct, but I can show you I made a mistake. So, I used the method of, uh, I think it Richard is his name from Holland, the same method to, to make these coils here. And, um, you know, these machines, you, they turn in both directions for the screwing. And I actually adjusted it to, for the screwing in the right direction to get the um, anti-clockwise coils. And all of a sudden, I had the clockwise coil. <laughs> so I, I managed to, to, with my finger, to, to change this, uh, the direction. So I can show you the wrong one here. This is uh, the inner, inner coil and the outer coil of the big one in the wrong direction. I made some of them uh, the first night, and then I had uh, <laughs> no more copper left, actually. And um, the last night, I finished uh, more or less at 2.30. I made, I made the ones I showed you, okay, with some uh, copper. This um, is all made from copper 2.5 um, millimeter in uh, diameter. This is the standard, uh, the standard uh, wire we get here yeah. for 15. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not diameter. It's cross section in square millimeter. If you measure no, it's, it, it's diameter. It's 1.78. I have the same wire here. Meter. Or maybe I, I put it wrong. It's square meter. These yeah. are the, these are the um, the one. You know, I, I, I bought. I had all to peel off. <laughs> That's the hardest shop, you know. Um, it's uh, it's the one. It's the standard wire for um, 15 amps here. You can get. I think it's pretty much the one who um, uh, Cash uh, su suggested it. I think equivalent to the 14 gauge, probably. Yes. It's it's probably 14 gauge. Yeah, I I checked it up, and uh, it's it's quite close to that. And by the way, uh, Shandor had a great hint uh, to remove the insulation from, especially the European wire, uh, using a potato peeler, and it goes very quickly. Does it? Yes. Well, this one, if, it's incredible. If, you're used, you know, if you're used with this one, mm -hmm. you can peel off maybe 70, 60, 70 centimeter in one. Uh, in okay, one well, Shander's got you beat by about 30 um, centimeters. You can do a meter at a time and uh, in one stroke. Yeah. So, Very well, nice. It's, it's not a problem if, if you're used to, you know, yeah. my first profession was an, uh, I was an electrician. <laughs> Oh, okay. computer yes. technician and the, and the software engineers. So this is the same thing I used, you know, as uh, as um, I think Sandor showed it. The big one here produces coils uh, about with a diameter of 12 millimeter. And the small one here, this one, I produced uh, coils with 80 millimeters, which is uh, by the way, the maximum, yeah, this is, um, oh, the small one, the small one is inside, you see, this is what I recognized, more or less the, 
um, the biggest uh, size you can can use, and it still fits inside. It's about eight millimeter, and that outside here is twelve millimeter size. Okay, so my next job is to, um, you know, starting tonight. I bought yesterday some a box here. <laughs> Here. That should uh, the base for for the nano coating. I did some uh, nano coating and and um, I produced some GANs before. The most I have is this one, the CO2, which I partly made from the unit I bought for, uh, by Cash, the the Omega, and the bigger one actually I produced with my own setup. With a bigger box. This is uh, the CH3, I think, and that's the CO, uh, the copper oxide. So it's a, a small amount. Uh, I have a question, by the way. Uh, I wanted to produce the the copper, the copper oxide the CO uh, CuO2 with the omega mon. And that's what I get after, you know, very, very little after about a month. So my question is, how can I produce <laughs> more and more of the quantity of this time? Well, this is you exactly... Sea, use uh, seawater. I'm, I'm afraid I'm in the north of Italy. <laughs> not, that's not bad. Uh, but the, uh, there's no salt sea. There's only the wide water sea. Or the lake. The lakes. Is that not possible? Yeah, but what we see is a better result with the sea salt. Okay. So actually, I've been in Rome last week, but I couldn't find you. So maybe I should have taken some salt water from Italy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's what I can show. Maybe, I don't know, it will take a couple of days to, to make this nano coating and. Uh, uh, the connection. I actually have to find out how to connect this. What you showed this this morning. Uh, I somehow had to get this this uh, your diagram. I couldn't really really uh, catch it up all the time. So I have to repeat that one to find out how how to connect these things. Okay, that's what I have so far. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. That's great, Max. Well, thank you, Max, for uh, sharing. I know electricians like those pliers for removing insulation, but it was only good to remove a small bit from the end, and because uh, usually you don't uh, blank, uh, don't uh, clean off a long uh, wire. So this is the tool which I, I am thanking to somebody who posted on the uh, YouTube. Okay. Share the video. This is a simple peeler. I, I think it's made in Switzerland. Is so it? It's a good steel. <laughs> okay. So um, just yeah. use uh, such a, a potato peeler, put okay. it on the wire, and, and uh, hold it well, and take care not to. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, take care not to uh, go into the wire. Just in yeah. the insulation, you just peel oh, okay. it at once, and you peel it so easily. That's quick. You see. Okay. <laughs> You hold That's it big. here, you peel, you peel, and then you pull. Who right. would have known? And now we're going to be it's selling pota way. potato peelers around the world. Are going to be, uh, you know, they'll be selling okay. them off the shelves. Maybe I have to buy some shares from this company. Well. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> invest invest in potato <laughs> peelers. But actually, I did with this with this one, uh, with the, with uh, that one, and. Uh, well, the, the longest one are more or less five, six meter. I need to uh, peel off, and it worked as well. It's just a Max, if you want to make a bunch of copper gains fast, go buy these scrub brushes. Pardon? Go buy the little scrubby pads, the copper ones that they use for washing dishes with. How many clothes does he want to make? He's keep on stripping it. Yeah. So, but I can see how Sandor is doing it, but I think my method is it's also... It's good, of course, it's good. Yeah, okay. So we have two 
shown uh, two methods which are yeah. possible. And uh, you know, the longest one you what you need is about what I recognize a five, six meter. Or and seven that's... meters. Hmm? Or seven meters. It depends on what diameter you yeah. roll in. Yeah. I calculated one... for an inner core of uh, 10 millimeters for the thick one and the four millimeters for the short one. And by my calculation, it's needed for uh, 160 windings. Uh, and the ends, the terminations also, which have to be the length of the uh, coil and the one and a half times the length of the coil, are calculated seven meters, 24 centimeters. Mm -hmm. The longest, four meters, 22 centimeters uh, for the 80 turns. Yeah. And uh, uh, for the uh, another with 160 uh, turns on the thin one, three meters, 62 centimeters. And uh, for the thinnest and shortest one, two meters and 11 centimeters. So, so 17.2 meters. Yeah. So it means a coil of uh, 20 meters uh, will be enough to make a, a set of coils of which you need three sets. So I think uh, for from what I bought here, uh, such a coil of uh, a roll of 100 meters, maybe for sure can do one, and maybe also the second one, or maybe there will be a few meters missing. But anyway, I calculated with a, with a spare five millimeter in diameter in case it would be not so tight. So maybe it will, it will be enough 50 meters. Okay, maybe I can show I can show my method how to yeah. to. Uh, make his uh, coil. So I bought this one uh, in the shop for, uh, you see the sun in the middle? Yes, yes. <laughs> I bought this one uh, in the shop long, yesterday for, well, less than 30 Swiss francs. It's about 25 euro, 50 meters. And it's nearly enough for the whole set, just a little bit more needed. And I do the uh, the the coil, you see this. I put just a mark on the top here, and while you while you start here turning, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or you can if you can count <laughs> quicker, you can make it quicker. So this is my method to to put the, the eighty or one hundred sixty. Um, Coil wires. Yeah, let me give a hint. Once you, like you a made piece? only, once you have made already the 160 turns, you put a mark with a alcohol pen with a fill tip pen, mm -hmm. and next time you stop exactly at that mark. <laughs> maybe, maybe I do that way when uh, I start uh, my own production here yeah. for the one. <laughs> it's a you count for first uh, coil and for the other uh, coils because every coil you need. Uh, so you need in total 12 coils. So the cost, you, the cost in here is about 50 francs here for to make the whole set. Very good. Maybe while you're talking about these systems, uh, hopefully by Friday, we will release a production unit that you can order to the website of the Keshe Foundation if you are thinking to go into mass production. Uh, I have actually ordered. I have actually ordered probably one of the first one, and I hope I'm. I will be delivered. Um, I will get the one soon. If you're in Switzerland, it should be with you by tomorrow, the day after. I am in Switzerland, yeah. So that's a safe in Switzerland. Latest, depending on how the Italian post work. Yeah. Uh, it should be with you by Friday or Monday, latest. If the Swiss custom does not have something uh, against me, you know. You no, know. by the way, we we have we are distributed. The whole full thousand units should be completed this week. Mm -hmm. um, so we expect some hiccups. It's not that it's going to be hunky dory, but then we handle case by case. Okay. We look into case by case. We have separated the production into um, energy unit car unit or North American unit. And the North American unit, you have a car unit and the uh, energy unit. Because the North American units has to be made in a different way by their standard. So okay, I'm, I'm excited. I, get... I think it should be with you by Monday latest, maybe tomorrow. Or yeah. 
I will I will uh, reconfirm that I have ordered the car and the home unit. Yeah, they come separately. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Yes, and separate. It depends how the production has gone. Yeah. They keyed up to produce up to ten thousand unit a week, so it should be no problem. Okay. Okay. Thank so you very much. From my side, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but as I said, if you are in the production or you want to go into manufacturing of units like a few thousand a month or whatever, um, a unit has been devised by one of the Cash Foundation supporters in Canada, which we have placed ourselves 20 unit order for, where the, what do you call, the coils and nano coating of them is all part of one system. You just put a copper in, and more or less at the end of the product, once you follow the procedure for whatever you need, you get your coils ready to, what do you call it, to use. Um, Mr. Kesh, uh, uh, JF uh, is on here. I wonder, he just came in from viewer to panelist. Maybe he has something he wanted to say about that. I'm not sure, but. Yes, if he's there, let's Okay, see. let's, uh, JF, are you there? You want to talk? Yes, uh, maybe uh, I would just like to show you a prototype version of the 1D system I'm using, if it's okay uh, with you. I have, a, I have a just a recorded it uh, on the view because uh, my wireless does not reach where I'm working. So. Okay, that sounds good to me. Is that sound good, Mr. Kesh? Pardon? Does that sound okay with you? We can uh, Let's present that from yes. GF. Yes, okay. Go it's ahead, JF. Hard for it. It's taken a lot of time to develop it. Uh, oh. Yeah, JF, you right. can. Uh, <laughs> my picture end up on there. There we go. Did you? How see come you turn up in there all the time? I don't know how that works actually. Okay. Do okay. Yes, please. it looks good. Okay. So I play. <laughs> just, just wait. Jay, I've just wait. Yes, yes, yes. You gotta get uh, Rick somewhere out of the. Uh, I, I shouldn't be in the picture okay. there now. Or yes, okay. Thank you. Can I play it now? Yeah, carry on. So, just give you, it's not optimized, it's just. Uh, Sorry for the camera view, I was alone, so I'm just working with one hand. So normally the time the, the system wind the, the koi, the two kois, uh, I have the time to put the gravitational leads inside and create the loop. So normally I can complete the koi in about, uh, for now it's about uh, 180 seconds, but uh, when all is, will be uh, adjusted in the grid, you see, I will, uh, Crank it up the speed of the motor. So. Then, because that's it. That's a very easy way to do it. Um, hello. For me. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you. Okay. So hopefully. By end of this week, you can order because the next step with this is when you made a coil, he's making a system to nano coat it. So the nano coating will be done and uh, you can produce as many as you like. The simple system like this is a gift for like African nations. Very simple, effective, it cannot be damaged, it cannot be destroyed. 
and allows us to carry on with our work in Africa. <coughs> Any other question or anything else? The question that came up earlier that I, uh, I passed over and was reminded, uh, Jenny asks, are emotions the only way to interact with plasma at a free state? From your point of view, what are emotions exactly? Is emotion energy? Is it like will? Of course. Of course. Everything on this planet, wind, earth, fire, emotion, soul, the creator, it's all made of one thing, and that's from the fields of different strength in different environments. You call it God, you call it tear, you call it emotion, all are made from interaction of the gravitational magnetic field, and there is no other way. There's no other thing. It's not wood, it's not glass. Even the wood and the glass are condition of gravitational magnetic field of a different strength. So just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean it's made of something else. It's very much, uh, if you are in a car and you drive off at high speed, there is a wind, but there is no car behind the car or in front of the car where the car has been. So the emotion is not a byproduct, is a controlled entity in interaction of the fields of the higher order in a strength. So when you have the emotion and when it slows down or you can control it, the amount of it you want to, uh, to release, then it changes into information and the information which created your emotion the way you want to do it, you shout, you cry, you laugh, you show it in physical dimension because this is what you decided to do. And is that with laughing, crying or shouting, you expect to get certain kind of interaction or picking up. If I cry, I get attention. So my gravitational force will work. If I cry and laugh at the same time, I get different kind of energy. This is what I'm looking for. If I come and shout at you, then I get different energy. You got to understand why we behave emotionally. It's not that we show what we feel, we show what we want to expect to return back from it. That's how it works. It's not the way I'm shouting at you and I'm gone. I shout at you because I want certain energy, gravitational magnetic field from it. If I had it myself, I wouldn't shout at you because that's the only way I can get it from you. Understanding of the work of the emotion is in so many ways different than how we have managed to hide it. You've seen a child doesn't know anything else. He comes and says, mom, I want a hug. It means I have to give a lot, but I want something back for it because I don't know where to put it. You walk on the street and a man comes and says, can I have a hug? So you just slap him on the face because I don't know if I give you what I'm going to get back. It's what we, emotion is interaction of what we want, what we are short of, what we expect to get back for our reaction. Because it's part of what you release, you open certain channels of receiving. I come and shout at you because I want your attention. In getting your attention, it means I've got your energy. Attention seeking is emotional effect because I seek for attention, but I create conditions that I get your attention. So I have your, I open in a way, I give so much to your magnetical 
that your gravitational opens up what I take what I want from it, but I don't give much to it. Because we go back to the teachings of what we used to have last week, and we go back to it after this, um, this week, is that when you have a gravitational magnetic field, if I give to this, the field energy increases here in this area, that what it does, this opens up. If I give to you, shout at you, the energy I give you, I add to this, in that I create a higher field, I create a bigger gap, you're exposed, I take what I want from you. Because now I have opened the plasma of your energy. I become a thief. That's all it is. I've said this so many times. If you truly love a child, truly love your wife, wake up at night and kiss her. Not during the day, because you know when you kiss, is unconditional. You know you're not going to get into that. Do you love her that much to wake up at night and kiss her? Do you get up and go and kiss your children at night, check if they are warm, and kiss them on the cheek and say good night, or have a nice sweet dream? Then you understand your love is unconditional. If you have to be in front of someone to say I love you, it means you're already looking for something back. So when emotion is how it's done, how you do, the reason you do, you are giving emotion to take at higher strength or you're doing just a stealing touch. If you're in a relationship, just ask yourself how many times in your life you have woken up at night, your partner is next to you and you kiss him or her and say, I love you, darling. I promise, not many of you have done that. Because you say, I love you, when he's awake or she's awake, because you expect something back. Because when they're asleep, they cannot give. But one thing you forget is the physicality which is asleep, not the emotion. Emotion receives, and what you receive back is a thousand times more than when you say to somebody, I love you during the daytime. Because it's the interaction of the voice, not interaction of the soul. Man has a lot to learn about the interaction of life. A long way to go yet. Any other question? Hello, Mr. Kesh. And this is Modris from Malta. Pardon? And this is Modris from Malta. It's who? Modris. Oh, Modris, Modris from Malta. Yes. Yes, Hello. Modris. Um, I, I made some springs I can show, and I have a question as well. I hope you only show us your springs, Modris. Yes, I promise. <laughs> I promise. OK, no problem. Let us share a string. <laughs> uh, can you see them? Yes. Okay. And uh, meantime, by uh, showing, I, I have a question for example, if we are short on the GANs, can we use the uh, GANs which we can extract from the plants? What are you making? You're trying to go to planet Zeus? <laughs> no, I made one extra. <laughs> ah, just in case. Yeah, you were saying you like you will need in a, in the end uh, 
a bit more. Okay, no problem. So a question about the uh, extracting gens from the plants. Uh, like example, I, I had the wild rice and I ground it and I applied the caustic and then I put in the salt water and I create the gens from it. Can I use that one as well to mix the ganses? Don't use rices to CH bond is too uh, weak compared to the copper. Uh -huh. You have to have something above copper. All right. Uh, can we use the uh, titanium oxide? Yes, titanium mm -hmm. oxide you can use if you have anything uh, on top of that. When you use a titanium oxide, try to use uh, like copper and a zinc in the same box. When you start making things like this, let me explain to you. Can we go back into the screen? Is there anything else you want to show us? No, that was... So you are really ready to fly tomorrow. <laughs> you have sure. your star formation. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Um, what, I, what I've got to explain to you now that we've gone into more advanced way of doing things is you all got used to making these nano-coated coppers with a zinc or a copper with a copper. Go a step further, put zinc, titanium, copper, lead, everything, and connect them one at a time together. These are the composite cancers you need for this type of work. Yes, he says. Don't be limited to simple thing. The new CO2 box, which if you get a chance to put it in the market, is especially made for this. It's like this, the stacker, where you can put different plates of different things inside, outside, in any shape or form, so you can create composite cancers. Because now the energy power supply, this is what is done now in the factory. We don't look at things. I say, get as many materials as you can, iron, copper, zinc, whatever. Mix the whole lot in together. But in the future, we explain to you how prudent you have to be in making these the answers if you want it. Because you don't need the gas to put on the CO2 layer. Remember something very important in the future, we come to it in the teachings. If this is your box, the blue box, and you nano coat it and gas there to put energy into it to get out what you want. Don't forget the biggest gas is you. If you can direct your energy the way you want it, you'll find out you don't even need this box. But those are who are wise understand. Anything else, or shall we call it day till tomorrow morning? We start at nine o'clock tomorrow, usual Thursday workshops time. Or we start 10, is that good? Oh, 10 o'clock, we start 10. Because start at 10? Okay, and shall we call it a, a regular uh, workshop or knowledge seekers workshop rather no, than this? You can still call it number 85, but we start at 10. Okay. Because our, most of our visitors around the world come around nine o'clock. We can't change the rhythm. Okay. As nine o'clock, we start as usual because uh, worldwide uh, listeners are used to over two years to come on Thursday at nine o'clock. 
So well, used to be six o'clock in the morning. Rick and I used to start at six. You remember, Rick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, six o'clock my time. That's right. It was good for him. It was just when he was home. It was uh, nine o'clock at night my time then. Yeah. Well, we, we improved coming up three hours. Made it easier for us. This chops to start really late. So we will start at 10 o'clock then for tomorrow. That's the Thursday, right? They say 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Okay. Sorry. 9 o'clock. As usual, workshop time. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Great. I have just seen this afternoon lunchtime. There's been a huge number of visits on the teachings on the, what do you call it, um, uh, this week, the yeah. blue uh, print week. Yes, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of traffic on the server and right now we have over 2000 on the live stream watching live and there's uh, like 200 in our uh, zoom and uh, probably a thousand or so on the youtube i imagine so yes it's uh, becoming quite quite popular we, we thank all of you for the support the foundation has achieved what we planned it took a long time some five years behind the schedule. We would have shown most of this technology some five years ago. We could not do it in Belgium. Now in the freedom of Italy, we have managed to achieve what was to free man from shackles of the, uh, what are called earthly fuels, even though the plasma is part of the fuel of this planet. It's a new way of living, unconditional giving. And I hope collectively all of us who are here or listen, will understand a new course where humanity has started. And we are enough of us, this foundation supporters runs into millions across the world, that we can change the course of humanity. Thank you for your time. See you tomorrow at nine o'clock as usual. Okay, great. Thanks, Mr. Cash. That was a very good Thank session. Much. Okay, that's the end of the Wednesday, October 28th afternoon session at the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. And uh, once again, thank you everybody for attending and hope to see you tomorrow. Same channel, 9 o'clock um, Central European time. Okay, I'll end the uh, live stream.